Welcome to the electrical version of the CACT Tech Explorer Catapult Project, developed by the Center for Applied Competitive Technologies at Sierra College. After you've built the Tech Explorer Catapult, you can convert the trigger to an electrical version. The Catapult also has a solar and electronic version. This movie assumes that you have already made all the parts of the manual catapult. You'll learn how to adjust your catapult, make a new trigger, add a solenoid, and wire an electrical circuit. When complete, pressing a button will send the ball flying. When doing this project, be sure to follow the written instructions and always wear your safety glasses. The first step is to bevel back the end of the arm near the cup washer. Clamp the arm in a vise and with a coarse file, remove material to create a 45 degree angle like the sample. Finish it with a fine file. To make this project, you'll have to reposition the catapult on a larger board. The sides are centered and attached one quarter of an inch back from the end of the board with the axle toward the center of the board. Mark the board to show where to attach the first side, use an awl and hammer to punch a pilot hole, and then use a screwdriver with two screws to attach the side. Then insert one end of the wire into the arm and bend it through the sides. Remember to put a washer on the screw before using it to attach the wire to the board. Mark the location for the screw that will hold the wire. Then insert one end of the wire into the arm and bend it through the sides. Remember to put a washer on the screw before using it to attach the wire to the board. Then check that the arm moves freely. Slip the bumper between the sides starting from the center of the board. Be sure that the wire is between the side and the bumper so it swings easily. Use a nail pushed through the sides to hold the bumper in place. Be sure to wear your safety glasses while making a new trigger. Mark a piece of strapping material at six and one half inches and cut it with metal shears. Use the sample and silver marker to mark four holes and two bending lines. Use the shears to nip off the sharp edges on both sides. Next, punch the four holes in the trigger using three punches. The small hole on each end is made with a 5 32nds of an inch punch. The largest hole is 9 32nds of an inch. The hole close to the middle is made with a quarter inch punch. Be careful to use the correct punch for each hole. Sometimes you have to jerk the arms of the punch apart to release the trigger. Bend the end of the trigger by sliding it into the bending jig at the mark. Bend it around the small pin to 90 degrees and compare it with the sample. Turn the trigger over to bend it at the second mark to 120 degrees. Then check that your trigger is similar to the sample. Next, attach the nylon screw and nut to the trigger. The screw comes in from the back below the 120 degree bend. Use a wrench to tighten the nut so that the flat edge is flush with the arm. Line the trigger up on the board so it will release the arm. Test it by holding the trigger down with one hand and releasing the trigger. Mark the board and use a screwdriver to attach it to the board with a screw. Check that it latches and releases properly. To make the solenoid bracket, use the sample and a center punch to mark the solenoid mounting hole locations. Punch out the holes with a 5 seconds punch, being as accurate as possible because it must fit the solenoid. Follow the sample with a pen to mark the slot. Be sure that it is centered in the nibbler tool and make cuts until the slot is complete. Compare it to the sample. To mount the plate to the solenoid, use 632 screws and a screwdriver. These screws are extremely short to avoid touching the black solenoid coil and damaging it. Partially tighten the first screw, add the second, and then tighten them both. Bend the bracket up about 20 degrees right at the base of the solenoid. Put the cylinder-shaped cotter pin in the solenoid and push the trigger into the slot. 
put the catapult arm under the nylon nut and close the solenoid all the way by pushing it forward. Then slide the solenoid back half an inch and check that it will release. With a pen, mark a dot in the center of the slot. Use a screwdriver with a screw and larger washer to attach the solenoid to the board. Check that the trigger holds the arm and releases correctly. To make the bracket that holds the release switch, mark the metal at one and a half inches and mark the holes using the sample. Use shears to cut the piece. The metal can fly, that's why you must always wear your safety glasses. Trim the edges on one end to match the sample. The rounded end has a larger hole, so use the 9 30 seconds punch. On the other end, use a 5 30 seconds punch. To bend it to 90 degrees, use the smaller pin on the bending jig. Double check it with the sample. Put the bracket on the board with the smaller hole about one inch in from the side and on the non-terminal side of the solenoid. Mark the location and attach the bracket with a screwdriver and screw so the edge that sticks up is parallel with the back of the board. Take the nut off the switch and put the switch through the bracket with the terminals horizontal. Use a wrench to lightly tighten the nut securing the back on the switch. To connect the two batteries in series, strip the insulation off the end of the battery clip lead wires. To prevent the soldering joint from being exposed, cut a one inch piece of heat shrink tubing and slide it on one black wire before you start soldering. Twist the black wire with the heat shrink and a red wire from the other battery clip together to make a mechanical connection. Check that the soldering iron is up to temperature. Clean the solder off the tip using the sponge and apply a tiny amount of fresh solder to the tip. Heat the wire joint while applying solder until it covers the wire. When you're done, add some solder to the tip of the iron to protect the tip and place the iron back into the holder. Slip the heat shrink tubing over the joint and use the heat gun to shrink it. The next step is to add a crimp connector to the battery clip wire. Insert the connector into the crimp tool and feed the stripped black battery lead from one of the battery clips into the back. Close the tool to crimp the wire in the connector. Now put the insulation into the back part of the tool to crimp the connector insulation to the wire insulation. Cut a 6 inch piece of red wire and strip both ends. Put a connector on one end, crimping both the wire and the insulation. Now take the red battery lead, heat and tin one switch terminal, hold the wire close to the terminal and apply solder to connect the red lead to the switch. Be careful not to apply heat for very long because the switchback is plastic. Push the crimp connectors onto the blade connectors of the solenoid in any order to complete the electrical circuit. Temporarily hook up the batteries and press the switch to see if it pulls the trigger. Now test it by putting the catapult arm in the trigger and pressing the switch to release the arm. You may have to bend the trigger and or adjust the solenoid location to make it work. The final step is to cut double sided tape to attach the batteries to the board. Stick the tape to the board under the trigger and add the batteries. Keep the wires out of the way and check it to be sure that the batteries don't block the solenoid from pulling back. To keep the wires neat, use a tiny nylon cable tie, pull it closed, and cut off the excess. Do a final test of the electric catapult with a ball in the cup. You now have learned how to build a simple electrical circuit and release mechanism that responds when you press a button. You also learned how to solder and crimp wires. Have fun with your electrical version of the CACT Tech Explorer catapult. CACT Tech Explorer was developed by the Sierra College Center for Applied Competitive Technologies. Visit online at www.tech-explorer.com.